morning, my lovelies, my beauties, my friends. My name is Christina and welcome to my channel. If you are new here, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I really hope that you will subscribe, stick around, take a chance on hearing some things that I have to say. And if you are a returning subscriber, y'all already know, y'all are my babies. So, whew, Wednesday was a video, wasn't it? That ending though, wowzers. Yeah, I kind of went off, but the love and y'all's comments that once again is so amazing. You know, I just want y'all to know I see y'all, I love y'all, I feel y'all, and y'all are my babies for real. So I just want to throw that out there. So today, like y'all been requesting on a million times, Christina, we went here. I'm here for you. I got you. So today we're gonna talk about whenever I got out of prison. Now if you have not seen my experience with God video, I know a lot of people probably don't want to click on that because people don't want to hear about those kind of things. But no matter what your beliefs are, I love you. I just want you to know. I don't care what your beliefs are. I love you no matter what. I'm not here to judge and I'm not here to ask. So, but it's still a very interesting story and every last bit of it is true. So I'm going to leave that linked below. If you haven't seen that yet, I say watch that first. Uh, yeah. So, but other than that, I'm going to kind of touch on it. We're just going to get into it because I'm rambling again. Bye. So when I was in prison, I went to Cairo's and I had this mind blowing experience, an experience that knocked me off my feet, something that I could not explain, something that I fought against that I did not want. I'm glad that I got it, but I did not want. Now, after that experience that's in the video linked below, I just knew that I had to change. I knew that I could not go back to my old stomping grounds. Now, all up until this point, my plan was the plan like it's always been. I was gonna come back to my old hometown. I was gonna get up with my friends, but I just wasn't gonna do what I did before, right? I'm telling y'all, you have to change people, places, and things if you want change, okay? So when I realized that I could not come back here, now at the time while I was in prison, I had actually had a lot of my friends writing me. They were still doing the same stuff, I had one of my girls writing me. She lives down the road from me now. Shout out to you. You know exactly who you are. She's beautiful and she's got a little boy now. I love you so much. But she would write me and send me pictures and she would tell me, girl, the club ain't the same without you. Because see, back then, Christina was a club bunny. I mean, I was the type of person, even when I was underage, that I would go to a club and the line would be you know, wrapped around the building and I'd walk up and whoever my friends were, me and them, they would unlock the thing and we would, me and my friends would walk in, no ID, no cover charge. I was just that type of person in my town, okay? So I was very well known and I had a lot of people. I wouldn't necessarily say friends because Lord, did I realize that uh, I didn't have as many friends. Uh, friends is a strong word. Didn't have as many as I thought I did. Anyways, so the letters that I was getting after my experience, I would continue to still get letters from my friends of them sending me pictures doing stuff. And you guys, I just took the letters and shoved them under my mattress. I didn't even open them because I knew in my mind, if I even read those letters, if I even put myself back in that situation and in that vibe and in those thoughts with those friends, that I could go back to my old ways. Now, I'm still in prison at this time. And it's like I told you, the whole thing, the whole basis of what I was holding on was was that mustard seed of faith. And all I knew was that all I had was this little tiny mustard seed of faith. That's all I had was that little tiny bit and I didn't want anything to come around it. Cause I wanted to see that that whole thing about if you have a mustard seed of faith, you can move mountains. I wanted to see if that was true. So I was gonna protect it. So also, other than not reading my letters from my old friends, I also quit talking to my friends on the compound too. I had friends that I didn't even make eye contact with for two weeks. I just had my head down and I was focused and I'm like, I don't know if this is really true and this is gonna work, but I'm gonna fight for it and see. And if it don't, then, then I can go back to my old ways. So I became really close with the chaplain, okay? And that's kind of like, the little preacher or the pastor, but they're considered a chaplain. And he was on the compound and he worked in the church. Now he doesn't work there anymore, so I can talk about this. Otherwise I wouldn't tell y'all who it was. 
Well, I was in there talking to him one day and I was like, I can't go back to my old house. I cannot go back to my old town. I know that if I do, I've got 50 friends waiting on me. I mean, my old boyfriend, the one that y'all are asking me, is that who I'm still with to this day? No, he was going to my grandma's house telling her, I'm gonna come pick up Christina whenever she gets out. I'm gonna go and I was like, Tell him that like, I didn't want anything to do with him like that anymore. I had this new life that I was going to chase. And I'm like, these people were waiting for me to get out, okay? Yeah. So I'm in there talking to the chaplain and I'm like, I just can't go back. And he was like, well, there's all these different like shelters. There's programs for people that when you get out of prison that you can go and stay in. And I thought about it and I was like, I want to do it. I want to do it. So I called my grandma and I said, I'm not coming back to town. I'm going to go somewhere else and I'm going to live in a shelter and I'm going to build myself up from the bottom. And she thought I was crazy, y'all. Even she was like, what? And I was like, yes, that's what I'm going to do. I wrote these letters to these different places asking if I could come in and I ended up getting into this place that was in Lakeland, Florida. Shout out to my people down there. I love Lakeland. I would still be there to this day if it wasn't because of my husband because I love it down there. So I knew that I was getting ready to get out. Now let me tell you something about prison, baby girl. You don't want to tell people what your DOR is, date of release, because what happens is people that are in prison that still have time, they'll set you up in a heartbeat. So you'll lose that gain time and you have to stay. So you keep it very secret in there. Maybe you tell one or two people that you think you can trust. But other than that, you're not in there for two weeks going, yay, I'm getting ready to get out. Because somebody's going to come up and start something with you or they're going to set you up because they want to see you stay because they're not able to leave. So I was very secretive about it. And then I found out that I got accepted into this place and I was excited. I was so excited. I was like, I'm going to go to this place and I don't have anything, y'all. I did not have anything but the clothes on my back, okay? So somebody sent me a package to have release clothes. You can do that right before you get out, like a family member or a friend or anybody really, a church, whoever's going to, can send you a package that has like shoes and shirt and all that. And that's all I had was that package. And then they give you, if you if you don't get much money in prison, they give you a little bit of money so you can take a bus and get food until you get home with, when you're released. So my chaplain was like, I will have somebody come and pick you up. So he wasn't allowed to. So this was like really big on Hush Hush and I'm so grateful that it worked out this way. So he had his wife come up there and be the one that picks me up because somebody has to sign you out. I mean, it's a whole thing. They don't just open the door and let you walk out like you see on TV. It's not like that in prison somebody has to come up they have to sign you out they have to see you in a car they have to see you leave okay so you have to have somebody to come and get you or if you don't then they will have their guards drive you to a bus station sit with you until you get on the bus and then you are out of the department of corrections custody so there's no opening the gates and you walking out and walking free and all that it don't, it don't work like that baby girl it don't work like that so she picks me up and I get into the car and I still remember, first of all, the regular clothes felt so funny on me. I had this brown like long shirt and like the bell bottom pants and some flip flops. And I felt so weird and so icky in regular clothes because I had been in my prison clothes for so long, but I didn't care. I was so happy. And so she was driving me there. It was about an hour, I want to say, to get to the, the shelter that I was going to be at. Now, this was a faith-based shelter that I was going to. So I still remember when we pulled up there, I'm so awkward in the back seat driving the whole time. Like I'm getting a little bit of motion sickness. I haven't rode in a car like this, especially where you can see out the windows. And it's so weird because there's no cuffs on me. I'm free. And not only am I free, I don't have any paper. I don't have any probation. I don't, I'm not on parole. I am Scott free right now. Okay. And it's weird. So we pull up to the place and I will never forget. I looked at it and it looked like a long cement house. What this program was is it used to be a, a retirement home for elderly people. So it had individual rooms in it and it was turned into this faith-based rehabilitation like home for women. And I opened the big wooden door and I just saw the floor was like a marble floor. I mean, it wasn't like super fancy, but it was, 
it looked like that marble cement tiles and it it smelled good in there and it smelled clean in there and it was very spacious and I look ahead of me and there's like a little sitting area a living room and I look further in and then there's another little sitting room and then I look in another I can just see all this from the front door I look in another area and then I see all these tables and then I kind of see women walking in and out and being busy and they're just doing their own little thing and I just was like this is my home now I don't know what's gonna happen to me I don't know what I'm gonna do I don't have a driver's license I don't have a penny I don't have anything and I'm I'm just gonna take it one step at a time so eventually being in there this the girls come out and they kind of they kind of show me the empty rooms and in each individual room because when you go in you go down the hallway and then there's rooms on both sides and in each individual room is two twin beds but y'all these beds were so soft I have been sleeping on a cot for three years okay and there was actually comforters and there was pillows and there was air conditioner and there was a toilet in a bathroom with a door and I was like I'm home ah! like I wanted to run around like home alone and like jump on the beds and like like that's how I was I was so grateful for every little thing I was taking it all in right so I look down the hallway and I see a couple girls walk out and they're not giving me too much of a friendly vibe you could tell they were kind of the ones that had been there for a couple years at this point and they kind of felt like they ran things there and I didn't care I was down for whatever they could have come out that room and told me here mop this floor with a toothbrush and I'd have been like okay <laughs> I was just so happy I was so grateful I was free and I had a new chance at life a clean slate you know I could have gotten out of prison and been like I don't have anything I'm a convicted felon what am I gonna do but or I gotta live in this shelter or I don't have a mom or a dad to take me in or anybody or I could get out like I did and be grateful for every single thing and I did so I'm in the house and later on it's, it's starting to calm down and by this time there's there's always like two or three women that are watching over you there but they were so kind and so nice they really welcomed you with open arms now I want y'all to think about the women there most of the women there are like addicts they had they had they had been from an ad addicted background so a lot of them were very street they had a lot of streets in them and then you had a good half of the women there that were super grateful just like i was for every little thing you know you're talking about you've got women there that have been walking the streets for 20 years doing things for ten dollars just so they can get a hit you know what I'm saying and now they're in this house with an air conditioner and a bed and food in the refrigerator and it's just like what you mean to tell me I can walk into the refrigerator I mean I didn't even have that type of vibe hardly when I was a kid I mean even when I lived with family members I had to ask to get something out of the refrigerator now I know some of y'all may do that with your with whatever and, and I'm not saying that there's anything wrong but I'm saying it was such a change to be able to go in there and, it, and I was very shell-shocked okay I was very tiptoeing around and I didn't want to cause any waves and I didn't want to make a stink I was just so grateful to be there I literally would have done anything that they told me to do okay so I'll never forget y'all there was this one lady and she was probably about 5'4". She was a shorter lady, had had some weight on her. She was a little bit of a round lady. She was beautiful. She, was, she had that round shape to her and really short hair. She was a beautiful dark skinned sister. Now she was probably about 45, 50 years old and she had a really, really hard life. Okay. But she worked so hard and she was always so happy. And let me tell you about this lady right here she could cook oh she could cook and she poured her heart and soul into all her meals and let me just kind of paint you the picture of her cooking dinner she was in the program with me let me point you a picture it was that kind of thing whenever you go into the kitchen and there's just flour everywhere and she's got an apron on and she's cooking and she's throwing chicken into the you know the hot grease and she's you know using her hands to wipe her thing off and she's just like what you want you want some potatoes girl you want some uh bread and y'all i gained so much weight y'all I was eating all kind of food every time I turned around and I loved her so much because you know what anytime I was sad or I had something wrong with me she would say what you want I'm gonna cook you something 
and I just love that about her and I'm like that to this day too I'm the same way but it was just so nice to have somebody doing for me you know and not expecting anything in return and boy I'll tell you what she could cook let me pop a picture up here right and show y'all how, how thick I got I was eating good up in there okay I was eating so good so basically what they do is they end up taking you to the DMV so you can get a driver's license or an ID card. I had a suspended driver's license then because of that DUI that I got back when I was 18. And I had all these like things that I had to do to get a driver's license. I had to have an interlock device on a car even though it was like all these years later. It still followed me. I started to do that. So I got me an ID. And basically then what they do at this program is they give you a bus card and they tell you go find a job. And I'm in a town where I've never been here before and I don't know anybody. I don't even know what to do. What do you mean go find a job? Well, the bus stop is down there at the stop sign. Go find you a job. So that's what I did. I went and got on that bus, y'all. And I rode and I got off on stops and I looked crazy because all the clothes that I had was the ones on my back. And then see this program had, they were affiliated with this faith-based thrift store. So they allowed me to go in there and get a few outfits from the thrift store. So all the clothes that I was wearing were hand-me-downs, y'all, but I did not care. I was so happy. So I get on the bus. And I'm looking out the windows and I'm looking at other people and they're on their cell phones and cell phones that I hadn't seen before. Because by this time, Blackberry started coming out and I'm like, what in the world is that? She's got, what is she doing pressing those buttons on her phone? You know, because those weren't out whenever I went to, you know, electronics move so fast. I kept getting off at places. I'd go in, I'd put in an application. And of course on the application, they want to know where you've been and what you've been doing. And I was so overwhelmed and I was there for about two weeks and they were really on me. They're like, you, you got to get a job because you actually have to pay to be there, but they give you a little bit of time to find a job. But other than that, when you get your job, you have to actually, you have to pay to be there. So they're on me about finding a job. And I, I'm at this point, I'm starting to feel like, did I make the right decision? You know what? So one of the ladies worked in Wendy's that worked there and she was like, girl, come on with me. She's like, come on with me, come get on the bus. I'm gonna have you put in it. Cause she saw, cause whenever I was in that house, I would clean, I would do people's laundry. I would do anything. I was making myself useful there. I wasn't just sitting around watching TV all day long and eating food. I was doing anything. Cause I wanted people to see that like, I'm here, right? I'm, I, I, I wanna be an asset to this place. So she's like, come on girl. So I went there and I put in an application and I got a job at Wendy's. Now let me tell you about this job at Wendy's. What I would have to do was leave the house about two hours before I had to work because I had to get to the bus stop. I had to ride the bus to Wendy's and then the bus stop lets you off a mile away because it was like way off into this area. So I had to get off the bus and I had to walk a mile in that Florida heat, South Florida. Some of y'all know down there in Polk County, it's hot down there. I had to walk a mile in my full uniform, visor on, everything, pants, those slip and slide shoes to Wendy's. And I didn't care. I did it every day and I loved every bit of it. Now let me tell y'all what I did. Y'all should have seen me at Wendy's, y'all. I had on a full face of makeup. I had on, you know, the cover girl little eyeshadow things and stuff, the blues and stuff and whatever color shirt that I was wearing that day that they gave me for Wendy's. If it was a blue shirt, you know, whatever that I was wearing, I would do the blue eyeshadow and they had me cooking chicken nuggets and I was cooking those chicken nuggets with sparkles on my eyes and my mascara on my lashes. And then they would say, get these French fries and I'd get those French fries and I did anything they wanted me to back there. Mm -hmm. Full face of makeup, sweat and cooking French fries. La 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 Y'all need some chicken nuggets? Okay. Oh wait, are y'all out of, y'all need me to run back there and make a salad? What you need me to do? That's just the kind of person I was. Anything anybody need me to do, I was like this. Anything. So then I started getting a check and then from the check I saved, I had to pay them. I want to say it was like $125 a week or something like that. But other than that, I saved every penny that I had other than $5 a week. I took out $5 a week because there was a family dollar that was right by the, sh the house that I was at. And I would go there and buy myself a little snack or a little treat or whatever. But other than that, I didn't spend a dime, y'all. I saved up all my money because I knew I just wanted to get a car. I was going to have a car illegal for the first time in my life. Because for me, I couldn't get my license until I had a car. And I had to, I had to have the car because I had to have the interlock device. So I remember being at the DMV being like, how am I supposed to get an interlock device when I don't have a car. 
but I can't buy a car and get insurance because I don't have an interlock device. So it was so much trouble for me to do that. It was like a trap for me to basically never get my license. But I ended up saving up enough money and I found this little car that was, uh, I'll pop up a picture right here. This is my first car. This is me out in front of that house, y'all. It was a little Dodge Neon and it had tinted windows. It had a little spoiler on the back. I paid $2,500 for it. It had probably 200,000 miles on it and it was a piece of junk on the inside, but I love that little car. Let me, and I rode that car till the wheels fell off. Let me tell y'all. So I had my car and then from there, I was like, I wanna get a better job. So I started searching, started searching, started searching. And this man that owned a contracted business for Publix Corp, okay? Publix Corporate, not the stores, but the actual corporate offices that they have in Lakeland. And I know some of y'all that's down there in Lakeland, y'all are screaming right now, because y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. Down there on George Jenkins Drive, yeah, those buildings. I became so close so close with the people there and I'm still friends with them to this day okay so we were so close and that was so long ago so that job that I got there I was being a janitor okay full face of makeup on y'all here's a picture of me right here y'all I was a janitor okay and I didn't care I came in and I changed trash bags and I put toilet paper in and I cleaned break rooms and I had so many amazing relationships those people started looking forward to seeing me every single day so then at this point I'm working at Publix and I'm working at Wendy's. And then, you know what I did? I went and signed up to go to Polk State College and I started going to school to be a social worker. So this is what my routine looked like then. I'd get up at five o'clock in the morning and I'd go to work at six. I had me a little scanner so I could get in beeped. I'd go in, la 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 la. I'd change trash bags. I'd set up the break room and make sure they had their coffee and all of their fancy stuff. And I'd work for the whole day. And then I'd get off and I'd go straight from there to school. And then I went to school five nights a week and then when I got out of school, I went to Wendy's and I worked about three hours. I worked part-time there. So my days were full. I had two jobs, one full-time, one part-time, and I was going to college full-time, okay? I was grinding my butt off and I was doing really, really good. And then there I ended up with the church, I ended up having an opportunity to go out of the country to Antigua on a mission trip. And here's some pictures of me here and I was in love. I fell in love with those kids. I was doing my passion. I walked the streets there and I got to see how those people live. And some of those people there live in little tiny hut houses. I'm talking about tiny houses. And that's like one of the things I was telling you about where there's like 15 people living in one house. And that's when I really gained the respect of like, They'd rather have everybody crowded in one house than have any of their family members sleeping on the streets. And that was so moving to me and I was so blessed to be able to do that. And it just gave me a whole nother new perspective. So I continued on this path. I was, you know, on Sundays, I was working at the church with the children. As you can see right here, this is me working with the children. I worked with the four and five year olds. And then I was working full time, like I was saying, part time job and going to school. And I was just so happy. And I was, my life was changed and I was changing and I wasn't getting involved with anybody else. And I was starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel. And at this time, I'm really starting to see that I can do this. Like this life over here, maybe it is for me, right? Maybe I am worth something. Maybe I'm really not that bad of a person. Maybe I'm not all those things that I believed that I was for so long still wasn't quite there yet. The maybes were there, but I wasn't quite there yet. I lived at that shelter for a little over a year, and then I ended up moving out and moving into a roommate situation, and then I lived there for a while, and then uh, she ended up moving, and then I moved in with one of my friends that worked at the Publix Corp. And this is over a couple years. So I moved in with, with her, and so I'm very, very close with the women that I, I'm working with at Publix. I'm even, I'm even renting a room from one of them. And then me and Jeremy started talking on MySpace. And then my life was really changed. So I'm going to leave it at that. Got to leave y'all dangling with the juicy details from that. But that is my first day out of prison and kind of how I ventured off. If you guys have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section down below. I love hearing your questions. I love hearing your ideas of videos that you want to hear from me. This is what I love doing. You guys inspire me. So many of y'all tell me that I inspire you. No, 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 no. Y'all inspire me. 
And when I say that, I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Y'all make me want to work hard for y'all. Y'all make me want to push harder and put more out there. And you make me feel unafraid to share my story on a platform as big as this, which can be very scary. But y'all keep me going. So I just want to thank you again and again and again and again. And tell you that I love you, love you, love you. And don't forget to like this video. It's a free way that you can help your girl out. And until next time, I love you, love you, love you so much. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.